Hi, my name is Mike with Side Effects, and today we'll be going over the Sphere node. So let's get started. Drop down a geometry container. Give ourselves a sphere. And right off the bat, you can see that it has generated a sphere in our viewport. And really, that's all it does. So the first parameter is the primitive type parameter. And this tells Houdini how to construct your sphere. So it's set to primitive by default. You can do polygon, polygon mesh, mesh, nerbs, bezier, and polygon soup. And right beneath that is the connectivity, and you might have seen that it's grayed out if we're on polygon or something similar. And that's because this parameter is only open to the polygon mesh and the mesh primitive types. So this allows you to control the topology of your sphere. You can just get the rows of it, or the columns, both, or triangles, and different versions of those triangles. Right beneath that is the standard set of transform parameters you'll see on some primitive geometry. You can non-uniformly scale the radius. You can translate it along any of the axes, and you can rotate it. Now it's important to note that when you're rotating the sphere, it is in fact rotating along its centroid. So that's a good thing to keep in mind when compared to, say, the transform node. If we were to drop this down and plug it in and try and perform a similar operation, you can see that it's rotating it along the origin. So this is a good thing to keep in mind when you're trying to make minor adjustments to your geometry. Beneath that is the uniform scale, which does exactly what you'd think. And beneath that is the orient option, or the orientation parameter, rather. So this orients the poles of your sphere in the given axis. The poles are best represented when you turn the point numbers on. You can see the point number 0 is the upper pole. So if we were to change this to x, you can see that it now has been pointed in the positive x-axis, and same for z. So that's what's going on there. Beneath that is frequency, and that's grayed out because it only applies to primitive type polygon. And all this does is change the density of your sphere mesh. Beneath that are two other grayed out options, rows and columns. And that's because they only apply to polygon mesh and mesh. And they, as you might have guessed, allow you to control the number of rows and columns in your sphere. Beneath that is the U order and the V order. And once again, that only applies to NURBS and Bezier. You can see that the rows and column job, columns options are still around for you, but you're also given an additional level of control with these two down here. And right beneath that is the imperfect option, and this only applies to NURBS and Bezier as well. When you leave it checked, it allows you to have imperfect spheres, but as soon as you turn it off, your sphere is forced into being a perfect sphere. Doesn't matter what crazy parameters you have set around here, it will always be a perfect sphere. Right beneath that is the unique points per pole, and this only applies to polygon mesh or mesh. Let's get this back to default values and turn on point numbers. So here you can see that we only have one point, point number zero at the top and point number one at the bottom. But if we were to check this, you can now see that we've been given a whole bunch of points that are all overlapping on top of each other. So every single point of this triangle has been, given its, has been given its own unique point. And this can get kind of messy, so generally it's a good idea to keep this checked and keep things nice and clean. All right, and below that is the triangular poles option. Now this one is kind of tricky. When you generate a polygon mesh or a mesh sphere, it brings along some degenerate degenerate primitives for the ride when it's generating the poles because everything else is quadrilaterals and these are tries but it wants to consider them as quads and so the best way to visualize this is to turn on the primitive numbers and then play with this so you can see that something is in fact happening even if you can't see it visually and all that's happening is Houdini is cleaning up the mesh making sure that the geometry is uniform and getting rid of any of those degenerate primitives so they don't cause any trouble later it's generally a good idea to leave this on and the last one is the Accurate Bounds option. And this is grayed out because we're not actually using this to generate a bounding sphere around anything. So let's give ourselves a pig head. Turn off this. Plug this in. Template and Visualize. And now you can see that we have a bounding sphere around our pig. If we were to uncheck this, however, it shifts slightly. It's not even centered. There's some empty space over here. It's still encompassing the pig within it, but it's not a good accurate representation of the bounds of the geometry. So leave this checked and it will do its best job to make sure that it is, is as accurate as possible. This has been the Sphere node. Thank you for watching.